Greetings, Benjamin J. the Victrola Guy, with another in the series on the tinfoil phonograph. Well, I'm still waiting for my two-inch copper tape to get here. So in the meantime, I went down and got uh, another roll of snail tape uh, to give me a, a chance just to do some experimenting on copper. And I had the machine set up for aluminum foil where it was lightly indenting and it was making good, loud recordings. And with the same settings, without changing any of the adjustments, I put a piece of copper on there. It made a, a recording you could just barely hear. So, the, the thing about copper is I have to set the machine up to use copper. Period. That's the only real way to test this. So, I made a recording a few minutes ago, and uh, fairly promising. The nice thing about recording on copper is the recordings are clear. They're quite distinct. Not as loud as aluminum yet, but I'm going to make an adjustment in just a minute. And here's a recording I made a couple of minutes ago. So, I'm going to increase the depth of cut for the stylus and do the same recording again. I'm recording on one inch copper snail tape. And when the two inch tape gets here, it should be here in any, any day now. Uh, I ordered it from eBay. I bought two rolls of it. And there's the copper when it comes off. So, once I have the mandrel full, uh, I can do some real experimenting. But in the meantime, I just wanted to uh, do a quick test to see how I could compare this directly to aluminum foil. And obviously when you use copper, as I said, the machine has to be set up for copper. You can't just go from aluminum to copper with good results. It doesn't work. So, I'm going to install a one inch piece of copper tape on the mandrel. And this copper tape has a really aggressive adhesive on it. I mean, it just sticks to this mandrel. And the nice thing about that, of course, is it basically bonds to the mandrel. This stuff is stretched so tight across these grooves that it's, it's surprising that, uh, that you can get it back off. I mean, it just really bonds to this mandrel. And it goes on super smooth really really shiny no wrinkles at all whether I'm going to be able to do this with a two inch tape and get it on there straight I have no idea but the only way to tell is to do it and it's really difficult to line it up so it comes out exactly the same width all the way around but that was close okay so the copper tape is on the mandrel and as I said this stuff just bonds right to it and gets so tight and smooth and it's like a mirror. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's like a mirror. Okay, so we're going to increase the depth of cut. So our depth of cut adjustment is right there and it's just a screw that this stops against. And it's a really coarse thread so it's hard to do any really fine adjustments. And it doesn't like to stay in one place the screw itself. I mean, the, the threads are so coarse that it's a lot of movement just in a little bit on this uh, thumb wheel or knurled knob, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so I'm going to increase the depth of the cut. And that's about a quarter turn. And we'll see where we, are, where we are. Okay, I'm right on the very first groove. So, this is going to be interesting to see. I've adjusted the machine now to record on copper. I hope, I think, we'll see. So, a abbreviated version of Mary Had a Little Lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go.
And this mandrel just feels completely different when you turn it when you're recording on copper. It feels nothing like aluminum. Aluminum feels gritty. You can actually feel it. With copper, it's almost like you've added a bearing to the machine. It gets really, really smooth. All right, so I have no idea how this is going to work. I've increased the depth of the cut. Let's see what kind of recording it made. Recording on one inch copper, a one inch wide copper tape. And I've got the machine hopefully set to record on copper. Now that's not a bad recording at all. And the nice thing about recording on copper is that it doesn't wear out nearly as quickly as aluminum. That's a fairly good recording. I can probably get it louder than this. It just depends. What I'm looking for is something that will make a good long live recording with a minimum amount of background noise. Um, I don't know, I guess I'll leave it up to you to tell me whether this is a noisy recording or not. Now the nice thing about this recording is you can hear for yourself, it's very distinct, really, really distinct. And as I said, this copper is just bonded right to this mandrel. And it's so thin that you can't really even feel it. I mean, this is a, uh, if I can get the two inch wide tape to work, I think there's a really good chance that this might be the medium to record on as far as doing a demonstration of the phonograph. It doesn't have a lot of background noise. Uh, I'll have to wait and see how the adjustments hold. But uh, this was just real coarse adjusting. If this had been aluminum foil, I would have had to do lots of little adjustments. But copper is very, very different. So, But it made a decent recording. That's the important part. So as soon as the two-inch stuff arrives, I will uh, do some in-depth, uh, probably one day of recording over and over and over get the machine adjusted to record on copper and see what it's capable of. But this is a pretty promising result. This worked fairly well. In fact, let's play it one more time. Way off over here. Okay. So, recording on copper foil. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. The Victrola guy at gmail.com. Answer all my email. Try to answer today. I get it. But if you have any questions about the tin foil phonograph, anything that uh, I can answer, I will. A uh, lot of fun, really interesting, especially now that I'm recording on something else, something besides aluminum foil. And this was promising. So, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. TheVictrolaGuy at gmail.com. And as always, thank you for watching.